Okay, so beyond using instruments to find local average treatment effects for compliers, which is a neat thing, um, long and arduous unless you use IV robust and then it's instant, um, you can also use instruments for some other things um, beyond just kind of regular instrumental variable approaches. And one, one instance of using instruments in kind of a non-conventional way is this idea of using promotion as an instrument. Um, you read about this in the World Bank reading. Um, this idea is um, a really interesting, unique approach to programs where there's just kind of universal accessibility. So if you have a program that anybody can opt into, there are lots of programs that exist like this in the world. The Affordable Care Act, anybody can kind of join the exchanges um, if you have income under 400% of the poverty line, which is most of us. Um, voting, anybody can register to vote. Um, it's not instant in lots of states. It's not automatic. Um, and there are some restrictions. Um, some states bar felons from registering, but other states don't. But it is kind of a universal program. Um, or employers will often have um, retirement matching for your 401k or whatever. Um, and those are opt-in programs that anybody can use. Um, and so it's tricky to measure the causal effects of these programs because um, of selection bias. You can't just look at the people who use the program and people who don't use the program because um, the people who want to use the program will opt into it. And the people who don't want to use the program will not opt into it. And there's probably some systematic differences behind the scenes of why they chose to do that or not. So you can't just um, measure the effect of, of something on voting or the, the effect of voting on some outcome. You can't do that. Um, so what if you could randomize things and say, we'll randomly assign you to vote um, or to register to vote. And if you're not randomly assigned to register to vote, then you can't register to vote. You must be a complier. Um, that's tricky because that's like unethical. So in these situations, you can't like randomly assign people to not sign up for the, the Affordable Care Act exchanges or not sign up for your 401k program with your employer um, because that's just bad. Um, so you can't really do a randomized controlled trial here. There might be too many variables um, that you can't measure in a DAG. Um, it's going to be tricky to measure the causal effect of this thing. But what the World Bank recommends is you encourage some people to participate in the program and you randomize that encouragement. So rather than um, randomizing like you must register to vote or you must not register to vote, you randomize and say um, half of the people will get somebody coming to their house, knocking on their door and saying you should vote. And then half of the people won't. Um, and nobody will come over and say you should register to vote. And so this, in, this randomized encouragement or randomized promotion seems like it might make good valid treatment and control groups. But really it doesn't, like it's not quite the, the same thing because you're just saying you should go vote. Um, or you should go register to vote, or you should go sign up for the Affordable Care Act exchanges. Um, but you don't know if they're actually going to do it, um, or if they're going to comply with you asking them to do it. And so it doesn't quite make like an actual real treatment and control group, like a randomized control trial, because they still get to self-select. Um, but it also does kind of work. As long as you use that random promotion, not as treatment and control, but as an instrument that promotion or that encouragement can be an instrument, which means it removes the endogenous part of whatever is influencing people to register to vote. And then you can find the effect of vote registration on whatever outcome you care about um, because you were able to remove that endogeneity through an instrument. And this is kind of odd because if you remember from the last session, one of the requirements for an instrument is that it needs to have the huh factor the weirdness factor, unlike um, the Scrabble score example. That was weird and bizarre, and it took a long time to explain why somebody's name that has a high Scrabble score is a good measure of Americanization, which then leads to labor market outcomes, but only through Americanization. That's a weird instrument. Um, being assigned to, uh, being randomly assigned to promotion or encouragement doesn't feel like a really weird instrument but it does work if we look at the three qualifications for an instrument where it needs to be relevant meaning getting random promotion should cause people to use the program should cause people to go vote 
which yeah that's the case um if you randomly go to different people's houses and say you should register that's going to help them register um if we look at the more formal definition here um encouragement leads to voter registration cool um it causes people to to use the program to sign up exclusive this means that promotion causes some sort of outcome only through the program. So um, if the outcome is actual voting, for instance, um, and the program is voter registration, then encouraging somebody to vote should lead to voting, but it only leads, through, it leads to voting, the main outcome, through registration. There's no other node. It's not like you go to somebody's house convince them to vote or to register to vote and then they go do something else and then they vote that's not the case like it is a clear kind of exclusive pathway between encouraging somebody to vote they go register and then they go do it and so it still works kind of as an exclusive um, instrument here that promotion random promotion causes voting behavior only through um, voter registration which is the program. So it's, it works as an instrument there. Finally, exogeneity here. Unobserved things that influence the outcome shouldn't influence the promotion. The way we get around this is promotion is randomized, which means all, no, all arrows coming into that node disappear, just like a randomized controlled trial. So it is an exogenous node. There's nothing else coming into it. So randomly assigning somebody to get encouragement or to get promotion to do something is purely exogenous. So it technically meets all three of these um, characteristics of an instrument, even though it's not kind of rainfall or kind of a weird standard instrument. Um, it also deals with compliance here, um, which is why this instrument stuff is cool. Um, so if you look out in the world when you're doing this type of, of, of randomization and this type of encouragement, there will be always takers. There will, people, there will be people who will always register to vote, regardless of whether or not you show up at their house and knock on their doors. Um, there will be never takers. Um, these are people who will never register to vote, regardless of whether or not you go knock on their doors. And then you have the compliers, who are the enrollers if promoted. So if you go knock on their door and tell them they should register to vote, then they will. If you don't, they won't. And so you have these three different groups of people. And so what we care about, what we're going to be able to find using random promotion is the effect of random promotion on these people, the enrollers if promoted or the compliers. And so we won't be able to find a population level treatment effect because it's not a full randomized controlled trial. We're not telling people to vote or to register to vote or absolutely do not register to vote because that's unethical. We're encouraging people to vote or not. And so what that will give us is this effect here, the complier average causal effect, which we find through instrumental variables. So if you imagine we have a data set that looks like this, just with lots more people, we have some sort of outcome, um, we have whether or not they were enrolled in the program, and whether or not they were told to enroll in the program. If we run a regression like this, with the outcome as explained by the program, but we use promotion as an instrument, that will show the local average treatment effect for people who received the promotion or the promoted ease. Um, so people who had somebody show up at their door and knock and say, you should do this thing, um, we can find the causal effect of this program for those compliers or for the people who, who listen to promotion or do not listen, or if they don't get promotion, they won't do it. Um, and so what this lets us do is talk about the effect of the program for those people. We know nothing about the effect of the program on always takers or never takers, um, because again, all we're looking at is compliers. Um, but it still gives us useful information about the effect of a, of a program on people who would listen to the program um, or listen to the encouragement. And so this is kind of a unique way of measuring the causal effect or a segment of the causal effect of a program um, without randomly assigning people to use the program. 
you just randomly assign people to think about using the program and it works, um, which is really, really fascinating. So um, you can consider this when you're thinking about your final projects. Um, this might be a good valid approach, um, especially if you're working with a program that has universal access and you can't really ethically randomly assign people to not do it. Um, you can just instead randomly assign people to receive encouragement to do it and you'll get a sliver of a treatment effect and it's really cool.